Okay, welcome everybody to this uh, retreat, special retreat in Frankfurt. Uh, this is going to be a, if you don't get enlightened, you can ask for your money back retreat. You can always ask, but you won't get anything. <laughs> <laughs> because the whole idea of meditation is learning how to let go of things. So you've already let go of a lot of money, now you can let go of a few more things on this retreat. My own teacher Ajahn Chah would often say, we are meditating not to try and attain something, but in order to get rid of things. And when we get rid of the burdens of our life, not only do we feel more free, we can also see more clearly. So to understand what I mean, I give the following simile of the monastery where I live in Australia. Uh, we built the monastery where I live in Australia 25 years ago. And we had to buy some land. We chose some very beautiful land, forest, uh, on the top of a hill. The reason why we chose to build a monastery on top of a mountain is because of tradition. You only find holy people on top of mountains, never in swamps. <laughs> so, we have this close in Australia on a berg built, or that is tradition. Man findet immer heilige Leute auf Bergen und nicht in Sümpfen. Except for Yoda in Star Wars, who lives in a swamp. <laughs> But that is not Buddhism, that's Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> so, for 25 years, we've had our monastery on top of the mountain. For the first nine years, I would travel up and down the road to that monastery in a vehicle. One day, on a beautiful spring morning, I arrived early and I asked the person driving me, to let me out of the car at the bottom of the hill. I wanted to walk up the two kilometers to my monastery. When I started walking up that road, I was shocked that I could not recognize my surroundings even though I had been up that hill maybe three times a week for nine years, now I was seeing that hillside as if for the first time. Und wie ich diesen Weg hinaufgegangen bin, habe ich festgestellt mit der Schauung, dass ich Jahre, die drei Jahre, die ich dann vorher immer hochgegangen bin, habe ich mein Umfeld gar nicht wahrgenommen. Und diesmal, wo ich dann äh, aufgegangen bin, habe ich dann zum ersten Mal wahrgenommen. It was so surprising that I stood still, and as I stood still, the hillside changed again. I began to see little bushes and rocks and trees which I had never seen before. And as I still stand and noch mal mehr meine Umgebung beobachtete, sah ich noch mehr Büsche, Pflanzen, Blumen, Sachen, die ich vorher nicht gesehen hatte. As I continued to look, I saw many more details that I'd always missed before. And even the colors of the grass became more rich and deep. The bark of the trees, I could see all of the, the little serrations and the shape of the bark. Everything became so detailed and very beautiful. And when I looked at it, I saw blooms, <laughs> blooms, <laughs> grass, und auch Bäume und an den Bäumen konnte ich die Rinde feststellen, wie die Muster aussahen, wie die Reliefs aussahen. Ich sah viel mehr. Every color was like bright and brilliant, 
and all the details were very, very beautiful. Jede Farbe, jede Detail sahen sehr brillant, sehr fein und sehr schön und sah ein sehr schöner Anblick. And I wondered why had I not seen that before. I was trained as a scientist before I was a monk. So I realized that when you are watching through the window of a speeding car, the light which hits your back at the back of your eye does not have time to form a proper image on your retina. Und ich habe, ich war, bevor ich Mensch war, Wissenschaftler. Und da habe ich gelernt, dass wenn man in einem schnellfahrenden Auto sitzt und das Licht rauscht nur an einem vorbei, die Bilder rauschen nur an einem vorbei, dann ist nicht Zeit genug, damit der Abdruck sich dann an der Linse am Auge dann absetzen kann und die Information zu einem kommen kann. So, when you look through the window of a speeding car, one image forms. And before you can fully see it, before it is rich in its color and detail, you have to look at another image, and then another image, and then another image. The images come too fast for you to experience them fully. When man aus einem Autofenster schaut, wo der schnell vorbeifährt, die Landschaft, dann wechselt die Landschaft zu schnell, dass sich ein Bild auf das Auge absetzen kann und man das in Detail wahrnehmen kann. But when you slow down, you see more. When you're absolutely still, only then does the light which hits the back of your eye have all the time it needs to form a proper picture, truly representing what's out there. You see all of the details, and the colors are rich and full, and everything becomes very, very beautiful. Nur wenn man genug Zeit hat und das Bild sich setzen kann, äh, wenn das Licht genug Zeit hat, ins Auge zu kommen, nur dann hat es genug Zeit, wenn man es voll aufnehmen kann, die Farben voll aufnehmen kann und die Details voll aufnehmen kann. I realize that that is a very good simile for the way we live our modern lives. We are living our life as if looking through the window of a speeding car, which is our life. We go so fast that what we see and feel and experience is only a fraction of what's out there. Und das ist wie ein Bild für, wie wir heutzutage unser Leben leben. Alles, was wir sehen, fühlen, erfahren, es geht so schnell, dass wir noch nicht einmal Zeit haben, das voll aufzunehmen. The details are not fully formed. The colors are washed out and we don't have time to explore our experience before we have to move on to something new. Und die Details sind verformt, die Farben sind verwaschen. Und unsere Erfahrung ist so schnell vorbei, dass wir noch nicht einmal Zeit haben, zu verstehen, was dort passiert. Meditation is like getting out of the speeding car and slowing down. Meditation ist wie aus diesem schnellen Auto auszusteigen und langsamer anzugehen. The slower you go, the more deeply you feel, the more you see, and what you experience becomes richer and more beautiful. It's called meditation happiness. Und je langsamer man da geht, desto mehr wird man wahrnehmen, desto mehr wird man sehen, desto mehr wird man aufnehmen. Und das nennt man dann in der Meditation die Meditationsfreude. So our job in meditation is to slow down and allow our mind to become so slow, it stops altogether. And only when you are still, can you see things deeply as they truly are, and experience the bliss of meditation. Und da ist das Ziel in der Meditation, unseren Geist zur Ruhe zu kommen zu lassen, dass er stillsteht, so dass wir alles aufnehmen können. Und das nennt man dann wie die Entzückung der Meditation. So in this meditation retreat, we're looking at developing as much stillness as we possibly can. Und daher ziehen wir in diesem Retreat darauf ab, so viel Stille äh, zu schaffen für uns, so, so viel wir können. Uh, yesterday, to the, the monks, the Sangha, uh, who were here, I gave the following demonstration. 
jetzt dann, glaube ich, zu den Menschen und Mann, die hier leben, eine folgende Demonstration gezeigt. I held, there was a cup of water yesterday, now I have a cup of tea. This is like my mind, and I'm now going to hold this cup of tea absolutely still. Those people in the front row, can you please tell me when this cup is absolutely still? Die Leute in der ersten Reihe sagten bitte, wenn diese Tasse absolut still ist. Is it still yet? Ist es still jetzt? No, they say no. I will try harder. <laughs> is it still yet? Is it still? It's not still, it's still shaking. <laughs> it does not matter how long I've practiced this. There is no way I can hold a cup of tea absolutely still. Egal wie lange ich das geübt habe, es gibt keinen Weg, dass ich diese Tasse stillhalten werde. This is how many people meditate. They try and hold their mind still. Das sind so meditieren die Leute, sie versuchen ihn ganz still zu halten. And they just get frustrated and tired. Und sie werden frustriert und müde. There's a very easy way to make this cup of tea absolutely still. Es gibt einen sehr einfachen Weg, diese Tasse ruhig zu halten. <laughs> you put it down. <laughs> And when I first put it down, it moved more than usual. That is to be expected. But I leave it for a few seconds. And now, it's so still, I would never be able to hold it that still. That's how we meditate. We stop holding on to our mind. We let it go. We let it be. So wir. Wir unseren Geist los, wir ihn sein. Uh, in the Buddha's first teaching, he taught four ways of letting go. In Buddha's Lehrreden hat er vier Arten gelernt, wie man seinen Geist loslassen kann. The first way of letting go, he called just throwing things out. Die erste Möglichkeit, Sachen loszulassen, hat er benannt, einfach Sachen rauszuschmeißen. It's Patti Nisaga. That's for the venerable Mark over here, so he knows, realize I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> what that really means uh, can be explained with a simile of a balloon. Imagine that you are going in a hot air or helium balloon where there is a basket underneath where you can stand. You can go very high sitting or standing in the basket of the balloon, but to be able to go higher you have to throw out other things from the basket. The more you throw out, the higher you go. Man kann schon sehr hoch kommen mit diesem Ballon, aber man muss auch Sachen hinausschmeißen, damit man höher kommt. Je mehr man rausschmeißt, desto höher wird man steigen. Soon you have no more things to throw out of the basket. So how can you go higher? Und bald wird man schon nicht mehr genug haben, um rauszuschmeißen und dann nicht mehr übrig. Und wie kann man dann weiter höher gehen? You decide to untie the basket and just hold on to the balloon yourself. And then you go much higher. Und dann schließt sich diesen Korb abzuschneiden und nur noch an dem Ballon festzuhalten und dann geht man noch höher. And holding on to the balloon, you can't go any higher. What should you throw out next? Und wenn man dann nur noch den Ballon hält und es geht nicht mehr höher, was setzt man dann los, damit man noch höher kann? Then you realize you have to throw you out. So you throw you off and then the balloon goes all the way to Nibbana. Dann muss man sich selber loslassen und dann kann der Ballon ganz so bis nach Nibbana gehen. So the meaning of this simile is as you meditate you have to throw many things away. Throw all of your past and all of your future away. Throw all of your thinking away. Throw all of your desires away. Then you get so high, like you've got the basket and you inside and nothing else, just you, the basket and the balloon. To go higher, you have to throw out the basket. The basket is your body. 
In English, we call you basket cases. <laughs> okay. So what? Uh, you're just holding on, just you and the balloon. So in order to go higher to Nibbana, you have to disappear. That's where you have to let go of the self. And then the balloon goes to Nibbana, and you're happy ever after. <laughs> That's called letting go by throwing things away. While you're meditating, if you cannot go any deeper, it means there's something you haven't thrown away yet. Look to see what you can throw out. Wenn man in der Meditation nicht weiterkommt, dann heißt das, man hat noch etwas, was man rausschmeißen muss. Schau nach, was du noch rausschmeißen musst. One of the great uh, teachers of Buddhism, Buddha Gosa, once said, the path is easy. So the, uh, the path is, but no person on it is found. So, Buddha Gosa sagte, der Weg ist einfach, aber oft ist es so, dass Menschen auf diesem Weg nicht gesehen werden. So the more that you are meditating, that you are doing this, that you are making it happen, the more that you are there, the narrower the path to enlightenment becomes. Das bedeutet, je mehr man sich bemüht, auf diesem Weg zu gehen, desto schmaler wird auch der Weg zu Nirvana. So when you disappear, the path is like eight-lane highway. <laughs> eight-lane autobahn. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the first way of letting go, which is throwing things away. The next way of letting go is called chaga, which means giving. Whenever we give, we should not expect anything back in return. If you give, expecting, say, a certificate or tax receipt or name on the temple wall, that's not called giving, that's called business advertising. So, the nächste Art, wie man etwas rausschmeißen kann, ist äh, Dana, das ist Geben. Und äh, wenn man gibt, dann soll man nicht erwarten, dass man etwas zurückbekommt. Wenn man denkt, dass man zum Beispiel eine Rechnung oder etwas entgegennehmen dafür oder an einem Tempel einen Namen dann äh, ansteigen lässt, das ist nicht Geben, das nennt man dann äh, business -Werbung. So, real giving is expecting nothing back in return. So when we're meditating, we should give our mind to this moment, expecting nothing back in return. If you expect to get enlightenment or to get jhana, or to see Buddhas come into your mind and tell you the future, that's not giving. So when you're meditating, make sure you don't expect anything, that you're not anticipating anything, you're not wanting anything, you're just giving giving your body and mind to this moment, not asking for anything back. The third way of letting go is called freedom. To understand the difference between freedom and its opposite being in prison. This story I also told yesterday when one of my monks was teaching in a prison in Australia. This man could be teaching meditation in prison for several weeks when the prisoners asked him to stay behind for a cup of tea 
and a chat. Und diese Gelegenheit ergab sich, als er, der mehrere Wochen schon Gefängnisbesuche gemacht hatte, ins Gefängnis ging, ein bisschen ein Gefangener fragte, doch da zu bleiben für eine Tasse Tee. So the prisoner started asking this monk, what is it like being a monk in Australia? What do you do? Und so fragte dann der Gefangene, äh, mein Schüler, so, wie ist das denn, Mensch zu sein in Australien? Was machst du so? So he began by saying, we get up four o'clock in the morning. Four o'clock in the morning, the prisoner said. Even in jail, you don't have to get up till six. <laughs> But he did add that getting up at four o'clock is voluntary. It's optional. You can always get up earlier if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> and then they asked him, can you watch the late night movie on the TV? He said, we don't have TV in Monastery. We have to meditate till about 6.30 or 7. So they said, then you can have some breakfast. They say, most monks don't have breakfast. And then after, maybe from about 7.30 till 10.30, we have to work, laboring. We work very hard in our monastery. The prisoners in Australia said they would never make us work that hard. <laughs> But then they said, what do you have for lunch? In our monastery, we ate everything out of one bowl. Sometimes the ice cream goes on top of the curry. Sometimes the custard goes on spaghetti. <laughs> everything is put in one bowl. Yeah, bei uns im Kloster tut man alles in eine Schale rein. Manchmal ist dann die Eiscreme auf den Spaghetti. Oder dieser Pudding ist dann vermischt mit etwas noch anderem. The prisoner said, that must be disgusting. And the monk said, yes, it is. Because <laughs> even in solitary confinement, they give you a tray with compartments. So then after lunch, what can you do? Can you play some soccer or some tennis? No, monks don't play soccer or tennis. Although one day I did think of starting a Buddhist soccer team. Because I know in Germany people love soccer. But if we did start a Buddhist soccer team, it would be run on Buddhist principles. First of all, compassion. If the other team wanted the ball, you give it to them. <laughs> If they couldn't score the goal themselves, you score and score it for them. <laughs> If they came to tackle you, you'd let go, let go. <laughs> That's why we don't have Buddhist soccer team. <laughs> So we can't play soccer in the afternoon. What do you do in the afternoon, said the prisoners. We meditate. They said, that's terrible. I suppose you just wait for your dinner. Dinner, he said. We don't have dinner in the evening in the monastery. I said, what do you do in the evening? Can you sort of play cards? play poker or gamble or any sex? No. <laughs> so what time do you go to bed? Bed, he said. We sleep on the floor. <laughs> so they say, that's terrible in your monastery. Even in prison they give you a little cot to sleep on. Das ist schlimm, das muss ja schlimm sein im Kloster. Selbst im Gefängnis geben sie dir eine Matratze. So these prisoners were so disappointed that their friend, who they got to like, 
was living in such a harsh monastery that one of them forgot where they were and they said to this monk, that's terrible in your monastery. Why don't you come in here and stay with us instead? <laughs> Because the, the prisoner had a point. It was much more comfortable in an Australian prison, I imagine, in a German prison, than it is in Temple. <laughs> so why is it that, say, in my monastery, there is a waiting list of people trying to join? Where in prison there is a waiting list of people trying to leave. Warum ist es dann so, dass in meinem Kloster eine Liste gibt für Leute, die da hinzukommen möchten, eintreten möchten, aber im Gefängnis so, dass es eine Liste gibt, dass sie da raus wollen? So, what is the difference between freedom and being in prison? Was ist dann der Unterschied zwischen frei sein und gefangen sein? It does not matter how harsh the situation is or how painful. A prison is any place you don't want to be. Freedom is wanting to be here. Und das steht kommt es nicht darauf an, in welchem Ort man ist. Gefangen oder gefangen sein heißt bedeutet, wenn man nicht da sein will, wo man möchte. Und Freiheit heißt, dass man da ist, wo man möchte. You may be in a marriage which you don't like, or in a job which you hate. You may be in a body which is painful with cancer, or you may be sitting here very bored. Any place you don't want to be becomes a prison for you. Man kann vielleicht wie im Stau sein oder in einer Heirat, wie man heiraten will, wenn ich will, oder vielleicht hier sitzen und sich langweilen. Gefangen sein bedeutet immer, wenn man da ist, wo man aber nicht sein möchte. To escape from prisons, you don't have to change your partner nor your job, nor do you have to get rid of the cancer or the other painful sickness. You don't have to leave this place to get out of prison. To get out of prison, to be free, we just change our attitude, wanting to be here. Und uh, um da rauszukommen, um nicht der Gefangen zu sein, in einer Beziehung, in einer Krankheit wie Krebs oder an dem Ort, wo man ist, oder im Gefängnis. Es geht einfach nur darum, da zu sein, wo man sein möchte. So, when you are meditating, ask yourself, do you want to be here? Or do you want to go into jhana or enlightenment? Do you want to be somewhere else? In meditation, if you want to be somewhere else, you are now in prison. If you are happy to be where you are, no matter where that is, you are free. Und deswegen auch in der Meditation. Man soll sich beobachten. Möchte man in die Jhanas, möchte man Erleuchtung erreichen, dann ist man gefangen. Ist man aber zufrieden, wie man jetzt hier sitzt, dann ist man frei. You may notice when you're meditating, you always want to be somewhere else. You don't want to be here. That is why your mind runs off into the future or goes off into the past, or goes into fantasy, because you don't want to be here. Das ist, wenn man in Meditation sitzt, warum dann, ähm, warum man sich nicht gut fühlt, oder, oder warum man sich gefangen fühlt, weil man immer an die Zukunft oder Vergangenheit denkt, oder weil man in Fantasien geht, weil man nicht hier ist. When you want to be here, then freedom grows and grows and grows, and you feel so free and so peaceful. That is the third way of letting go. Wenn man da ist, wo man sein möchte, dann äh, ist man frei. Und dann äh, kommt auch das Glück von allein, und man ist froh, da zu sein, wie man ist. And the fourth way of letting go is called analia, which means not keeping anything. Die vierte Art äh, zum Loslassen ist an den Analia, nicht etwas behalten, was man, was man möchte. Again, yesterday, to the counsellors and the people who work here, I said, if you're going to be a counsellor, you have to be like a rubbish bin, a trash can. So, 
So you have to listen to people, to be with them, and allow them to put all their rubbish into you. But the most important thing of being a counsellor or a good friend is to be a rubbish bin, a trash can, with a hole in the bottom. So whatever you accept goes right through you the other way, just like your mouth and the hole in your bottom, it just goes right through. You don't keep anything. <laughs> That's like whatever happens to you in your meditation. Don't keep anything. Allow things to come and to go. So don't keep experiences, good or bad experiences. You receive them like a trash can and they go right through you and nothing sticks. That's the fourth way of letting go, having a non-stick mind. So those are four ways of letting go. I'll just repeat them again. Throwing things away, like in the balloon. Uh, the next one, giving, expecting nothing back in return, no expectation. Freedom, wanting to be here, no matter what's happening. And having a non-stick mind, just like those frying pans with Teflon, nothing sticks to it. <laughs> There's four ways of letting go. If you practice like that, I will not need to give you any more instructions. <laughs> but because you can't do that, I have to work harder. <laughs> so, the next little teaching about meditation, how to become still, I will teach the two different ways of meditation. There are two different ways of meditation, and it do not mean Samatha Vipassana, that are two different ways of meditation. The two different ways of meditation I call Second Noble Truth Meditation and Third Noble Truth Meditation. This is basic Buddhism, the Buddha taught Four Noble Truths. Suffering, the cause of suffering, the end of suffering, and the way leading to the end of suffering. The second noble truth said that craving leads to suffering. The second noble truth said that craving leads to suffering. So that's why Second Noble Truth Meditation means crave, 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 I want, I want, I want. I want to see peace, I want to see lights, I want to sort of be enlightened. That's called Second Noble Truth Meditation. Want, want, want. When you want, when you crave, the Buddha said it leads to suffering. So if you're meditating and suffering, you are doing Second Noble Truth meditation. <laughs> I've been teaching meditation for I don't know, 20, 30 years, and sometimes you see people meditating, and they're meditating like this. 
für deren Meditation seit 20, 30 Jahren und manchmal sehe ich dann Leute bei Meditieren, die meditieren und es ganz kaum Das ist called Second Noble Truth Meditation. Das ist dann Meditation der zweiten Ebene. Uh, often in some meditation retreats, they take a group photograph of people at the end of the retreat. Manchmal bei Meditationsretreats nehmen wir ein Gruppenfoto am Ende vom Retreat. They are always smiling because now they can go home. <laughs> I would like to take a group photograph at the beginning of the retreat. If they are smiling then, or in the middle of the retreat, if they are smiling then, then they're good meditators. If they were smiling, I would realize they're doing third noble truth meditation. So that letting go, it leads to the end of craving said the third noble truth. Stopping craving leads to Nibbana. So when you let go of craving, according to third noble truth, when you want nothing, then you lead to the happy meditations. Then so is it then, when man nichts möchte, then it leads to a good meal. Now sometimes people ask, well, when you're meditating, what should you be watching? Some people watch the breath, some people watch their body, some people uh, uh, watch or listen to sounds, do mantra meditation. It does not matter what object of meditation you choose. What is most important is not what you're meditating on, but how you are meditating. Some people have very strong willpower. They can say, watch the breath, and they can observe every breath, in and out, without missing one, for an hour. But they are just control freaks, and they get more tense than anybody. About 15 months ago, I was teaching at a conference on meditation, and uh, there was a professor from Stanford called Dr. Philip Golden of, on meditation. Dr. Philip Golden from Stanford University. He was doing some research on meditation. So, Stanford University being a very rich university, he got funding for the following experiment. He took a number, a great number of students. Half of the students he sent on a meditation retreat for one day. The other half of the students he sent to a spa for one day, paid for by the university. Und er hat dann diese Testgruppe, hat er die Hälfte genommen und hat sie zu einem Tag Meditationsretreat geschickt. Die anderen hat er für einen Tag in ein Spa geschickt, auf Kosten der Universität. In a spa you get massage, hot baths, all nice relaxing things. He wanted to find who were more relaxed at the end of the day, the meditators or the ones who went to the spa. The results were very clear. 
the people who went to the spa were far more relaxed. <laughs> people don't know how to meditate. They should let go and relax. <laughs> so, <laughs> be careful. Don't try too hard. Once, the Buddha was walking with his attendant, Ananda, when he saw a monk sitting perfectly straight, with his eyes closed, meditating. The Buddha turned to his attendant, Ananda, and said, I am worried about that monk. <laughs> Two weeks later, that monk disrobed and got married. <laughs> An hour or two later, they passed a second monk who was meditating like this. <laughs> <laughs> the Buddha turned to Ananda and smiled. I am not worried about this monk. <laughs> Two weeks later, that monk became fully enlightened with psychic powers. <laughs> Why? The reason was that first monk sitting straight was a control freak. He was trying very hard. When you try very hard, you just make stronger ego. The reason was that the first man was a control freak. He had very much tried and that's why he had more leadership. The second monk was not trying to control his mind or his body. He was letting go. Soon his sleepiness would disappear and he become very peaceful. The trick of meditation is learning how to let go of controlling things. The trick by the meditation is when Nearly all of you have been very successful in life because you've worked hard. If you want to be successful in meditation, you have to go in another direction. Just before the Buddha became enlightened. He did a test to see if he had the accumulated good karma to become enlightened. He put his bowl in the river and said, if I am to become a Buddha enlightened, may my bowl float against the current. His bowl went upstream instead of downstream. That was the story which I read. I now understand it was not just a story. He was telling you how to become enlightened, to go against the stream of craving. Und jetzt aus meiner Erfahrung kann ich sagen, es ist etwas oder was er da meinte, wie dieser wie diese Schale hochschwimmt, ist wie man meditieren soll. Man soll gegen den Strom gehen, auf gegen den Strom von Alarm. This is the most difficult thing to do. Das ist das Schwierigste, was zu erreichen ist. Some people say, I shall go against the stream of craving. I will not crave. I will let go. 
That is not going against the speed of craving. That's more craving. Manche sagen dann, okay, ich werde gegen den Strom gehen. Ich werde gegen den Strom gehen. Aber das ist dann auch, ähm, das ist nicht gegen den Strom des Handels. What you need to do is just to stop interfering. Was man machen muss, ist einfach aufhören, ähm, dazwischen zu gehen. Stop holding on to things. Put them down. Aufhören, an Sachen festhalten, an Sachen äh, hinstellen. Your mind is like a lake of water. Dein Geist ist wie ein See mit Wasser. If you put your finger in, you create wave. Wenn man seine Finger reintritt, erzeugt man Wellen. If you interfere with your mind, it will become still. Wenn man seinen Geist, wenn man seinen Geist dazwischen geht, dann wird es nicht so ruhig kommen. So your job is to sit there and watch and don't interfere. Deswegen ist die Aufgabe, seinen Geist zu beobachten und nicht einzugreifen. If you get sleepy, be happy to be sleepy. Wenn man müde wird, sei froh, müde zu sein. If you become restless, be content to be restless. Wenn du rastlos wirst, dann freu dich, dass du dass sei glücklich, damit dass du rastlos bist. If you're sitting there and nothing is happening, be content that nothing is happening. Wenn man sitzt und nichts passiert, dann sei zufrieden, damit das nichts passiert. That way, things begin to happen. Diese Art und Weise beginnen Sachen gestalten uns in ihm zu passieren. One of the fundamental teachings of Buddhism is the law of karma. Eine der grundlegenden Lehren von Buddha ist die Lehre von Karma. There is something which I call meditation karma. Es gibt etwas, was ich Meditationskarma nenne. There is good karma which you make right now which leads to peace which leads to joy, which leads to freedom. If anybody knows the Eightfold Path, the second factor of the Eightfold Path is called Right Intention. The Buddha said, Intention is Karma. Karma is intention. Und der Buddha sagt, der Absicht ist Karma und Karma ist Absicht. So the right intention, the good karma of the second factor of the Eightfold Path is intentions of letting go, intentions of kindness, intentions of gentleness. These are the three good meditation karmas. Letting go being kind, being gentle. Und dann gibt es die Absichten, die dann dazu führen, dass man ruhig wird. Das sind dann Absichten loszulassen, Absichten freundlich zu sein, Absichten äh, reich zu sein. Sometimes people say they can't meditate. I say, can you let go? Can you be kind? Can you be gentle? If you can let things be, if you can be kind, if you can be gentle, you can meditate. Now this doesn't matter what you're experiencing whether you're watching a breath, or you're watching sleepiness, whether you are uh, watching your body, or whether you are watching a light, it's not important. What's important is you're letting things be, you're being kind, and you're being gentle. And it's not important if man then schädlich wird, or rastlos is, or what's on the body or so. The main thing is that man friendly is, sanftmütig is, that's important. So you get a thought coming in your mind, just let it be. Be kind to yourself. Don't keep saying, stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> be gentle. So don't sit on the floor and experience great pain. And 
Deswegen sitzt nicht auf dem Boden und erfahrt großen Schmerz. We have chairs. You know what chairs were made for? Sitting on. Wir haben Stühle, wisst ihr, wofür Stühle sind, um darauf zu sitzen? So if you get during this retreat sore legs or sore knees or sore back, sit on a chair. But some people have got big ego. They say, no, I am going to sit on the floor. <laughs> they think posture is important. They have to sit down full lotus with a straight back. Even though, even in Guantanamo Bay, they would not allow that. <laughs> When it comes to your physical posture, it does not matter what you're doing with your legs. It doesn't matter whether your hands are here or hands are, wherever your hands are. There's only one essential part of your physical posture which helps meditation. Deswegen die Körperhaltung und Meditation. Es ist nicht wichtig, ob die, wie die Füße sind, ob die Hände hier sind, hier sind oder äh, wo sie sind. Es gibt nur eine wichtige Sache in der Meditation. The most important part of your posture in meditation, which you should work on, is what's happening around your mouth. The end should be turned upwards, not downwards. <lacht> und man muss darauf achten. Was von dem Mund passiert, ob die Winkel nach oben gehen oder nach unten gehen? Now this is not a joke, that helps your meditation. If you smile when you're meditating, it gets far, far easier. Das ist kein Scherz, wenn man äh, lächelt während der Meditation, ist es viel, viel einfacher. If you are gritting your teeth, no way can you become peaceful. You are controlling too much. So these are making good meditation karma. Letting things be. Being kind, being gentle to your body and to your mind. What I mean by being kind, being compassionate, uh, I won't go into detail, but there's a story in my book opening the door of your heart, where you say to anybody, whoever you are, whatever you've done, the door of my heart is open to you. Come in. Es gibt eine Geschichte in einem meiner Bücher, das heißt, öffnet die Tür zu meinem Herzen. Und ähm, da geht es dann um äh, wie, äh, Mitgefühl und Einfühlsamkeit. And this is the sort of kindness we need in meditation. Whatever you are experiencing, sleepiness, restlessness, boredom, or beautiful meditation, does not matter what you're experiencing, to say to everything, the door of my heart is open to this moment. No matter what it is, come in. Uh, gut, dass du gekommen bist. Und so ist es in der Meditation, wenn man Langeweile oder Müdigkeit oder Rastlosigkeit trifft, dass man dann sagt, uh, willkommen, sei mein Gast. When you embrace every moment with kindness, things become peaceful and still. You're letting go. You're not interfering. You're not controlling. Wenn um, jeden Moment eine Situation mit uh, Freundlichkeit begegnet, dann umarmt man diese Situation und dann lässt man auch dadurch los und es kreiert wie so eine Ruhe oder wie einen Frieden. Man lässt los. So, all I've taught so far, it does not matter what you're meditating on, it's all how you're meditating, with kindness, with gentleness or with controlling. Und deswegen alles, was ich bis jetzt gesagt habe, es kommt nicht darauf an, was man wie man meditiert, oder welche Methode man benutzt, sondern wie man meditiert, mit Freundlichkeit und Ordnung. When you let go and are kind and gentle, you're making good meditation karma. You must get good results soon. Good karma leads to good results. If you practice this way, the mind becomes peaceful, just because that's the law of nature. Wenn man mit guten Meditationskarma praktiziert, mit ähm, 
Gutmütigkeit, Sanftheit, dann ist das wie die Regel oder die, die Regel des Karma, dass man dann zu guten Resultaten, dass das zu guten Resultaten führt, dann wird früher oder später gute Resultate dann haben. This is a very difficult teaching, but this is the heart of all meditation. Das ist sehr schwierige Lehre, aber das ist der Kern von was wie man Meditation angeht. During this retreat, you will be trying to let go many times and not succeeding because you'll try to let go. Ja, dieses Meditationsretreat wird man oft auf Hindernisse stoßen, weil man nicht loslässt, sondern weil man versucht loszulassen. But maybe once or twice you just ah give up, what the hell. And then you let go and become peaceful. Recently at a retreat which I gave in Thailand, just one hour before we finished the retreat, one lady, she had no progress at all during the eight-day retreat. So she just gave up. One hour to lunch, who cares? And because she gave up, she had a very, very beautiful meditation. Und auf einem neuntägigen Meditationsschritt äh, übersehen, dann gab es eine, eine Frau und sie hatte so eine schwierige Meditation. Und sie sagte, sie konnte nicht meditieren. Aber eine Stunde vor dem äh, mit Abschluss mit der Kessel hat sie gesagt, ja, okay, jetzt egal, ich lasse los. Und da hatte sie eine sehr gute Meditation. And it's one of my great pleasures as a meditation teacher when people come up and tell me. She came up, she was looking at me, crying. Oh, what a bar, it's so nice. Oh, it's so wonderful. I never thought it would happen to me. <laughs> you have to translate with all of the actions too. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all because she finally learned how to let go. When you do let go, there's a natural progression happens. You get more more still. The more still you get, the more you see. The more you see, the more beautiful it is. And so kommt man weiter in der Meditation. Und je mehr man loslässt, desto mehr sieht man und desto mehr kommt, sieht man wieder, was man loslässt und so weiter. And then you get enormous amounts of happiness. Und dann bekommt man große Mengen an Glückseligkeit. If you want the happiness, it never comes. If you let go, it comes by itself. Wenn man Glückseligkeit möchte, dann kommt es nicht. Wenn man davon, wenn man von Sachen loslässt, dann kommt es zu einem von allein. And one of the reasons why I teach this meditation, because I want other people to experience such happiness. This is the happiness which is more intense, more long-lasting and more delicious than sexual orgasm. And that's why I teach people to experience it. 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 That's so when I say that, people become very interested. <laughs> it is called my marketing slogan. <laughs> and it's true. <laughs> the deeper you meditate, the more you let go the more beautiful everything seems. This is, this is nature. But as a warning to each one of you, when you do start getting close to such peace and such bliss, don't be afraid. There is no danger at all in such deep meditation. The danger comes from not meditating.
the danger comes from not meditating. And we're not just meditating for bliss and for pleasure. Also, you see things very deeply. The happiness and the bliss always come together. Und nicht nur, dass wir für diese Entzückung oder der Glückseligkeit oder so meditieren, sondern auch, weil man Sachen einfach viel tiefer oder viel besser sehen kann. Die äh, Entzückung und so, das kommt aber auch dabei. How much more time have I got? Tim is okay. To give you another simile, sometimes people talk about samatha vipassana meditation. My teacher Ajahn Chah would always say they go together. To give you a simile, there was a married couple, Sam, Atta, and Vi Pasana. There were the names, Sam and Vi. <laughs> Sam Atta and Vi Pasana. So, es gibt dazu eine Geschichte, sagen wir, es gibt ein verheiratetes Ehepaar und der eine heißt Sam und Atta. Ne, Sam und, also der eine heißt Sam und die andere heißt Atta. Und mit Nachnamen heißen sie. Vi. Also, so der erste heißt Sam. B, okay. And they also had a dog. And the dog was called Meta, which is like compassion. So one day, Sam and Vi decided to go on a walk up to the top of the mountain. Sam wanted to go to the top of the mountain because it was so peaceful and calm on top of the mountain. Sam wollte auf den Berg gehen, weil es so ruhig und friedvoll war auf dem Berg. His wife, Vi, wanted to go to the top of the mountain to see the beautiful view. Seine Frau, Vi, die wollte hoch auf den Berg, weil die Aussicht so schön war. So they both went together and they took their dog, Meta, with them. Sometimes as they climbed the mountain, sometimes Sam would go ahead, sometimes Vi would go ahead. But they would go together. And sometimes Meta would be ahead, the little dog would run ahead, sometimes would go sniffing something and stay behind. But the higher they got up the mountain, the more peaceful it became. The higher they got up the mountain, the further everybody could see. The higher they got up the mountain, the more this little dog Meta wagged its tail. <laughs> when they got to the top of the mountain, Sam experienced a beautiful peace. It was so peaceful. But Sam had eyes. He could also see the magnificent view where you could see everything forever. Vi could experience a view, but she also had emotions. She could experience a deep peace on top of the mountain. Because at the top of the mountain, the peace and the view come together. Just in meditation, the calm and the inside always come together. 
Or like walking up the hillside to my monastery. I had to be still to see everything. But I forgot about little dog, Meta. When he got to the top of the mountain, he was wagging his tail so much it almost fell off. <laughs> Because at the top of the mountain there is not just the beautiful view, there is not just the stillness, there is the bliss of the highest and deepest compassion. The three will always go together. Sam, Fai and their dog never go anywhere without each other. Peace, wisdom, compassion are inseparable. So if you ask, are you doing samatha? Are you doing vipassana? Are you doing compassion? They all go together. So when I went up the hill, when I became still, I saw things that were just so beautiful. You love the whole world. So that's how meditation works. So when you understand how it works, now the next thing to do is to remember, to let go, be kind, be gentle, no expectations, happy to be here. And then little by little you climb the mountain and you'll understand what meditation is all about. So during the next few hours until I give another talk, it does not matter if you're watching the breath or whatever you're watching, today remember how you are doing this is most important. If you're sleepy, it doesn't matter you're sleepy. Don't try and not be sleepy. If you're restless, be kind to your restlessness. And if you're dull, just be happy to be dull. Allow it to be. Open your mind. Open the door of your heart to your dullness. Have the right attitude and then you'll go higher and higher up the meditation mountain. Dann müde zu sein oder noch zu sein, praktiziert in dieser Art.